Catch up to you. What'd you get for number two? Yeah, because the pointing the pointing finger is. <clears throat> What's the pointing finger? Ten thousand. I like it, so I got forty thousand. Each little lotus flower. So you got forty-two thousand. Do I have any hundreds? Nope. So, um, is there any reason the Egyptians needed the symbol for zero? The only reason they would need a symbol for zero is if they actually wanted to communicate zero to somebody, right? In which case, they just kind of said something in place of that. Uh, so they really, in order, like our system would fall apart without zero, correct? We would quickly just go to crap. Um, so the Egyptians, uh, they're, the way they represent numerals, they don't need uh, the, a, a numeral for zero. What about this guy? You got an astonished person there. I mean, one million something. All right, little fish dudes. Yeah, yeah. So one million, two hundred and... Yeah, 14,000. 330, I love it. I like it. All right, so Egyptians, you got to love it. Especially because I'm going to give you the symbols. If I were making you memorize them, that would be the only bad thing about their system would be trying to memorize this. Okay. Um, so obviously, I've got to make you go the other way. All right. So what do I do for one there? finger? Yeah, <laughs> my favorite spell. So I'm just going to do that. Little banana. So that's ten thousand, and then I just need two scrolls. Yeah, two hundreds. Yeah, two scrolls. I like it. Kick ass. I like it. And then, oh, it's gonna play. I didn't give you that one. Right, so number eight, you get to make a little astonished person, and then the next symbol I need, I need three what's here for the thousands. The lotus flower. Oh boy. Okay. Look for more of them. Right. Can you see how beautiful that is? Mm -hmm. they, namely, not. So, as long as I can distinguish what it represents, and thankfully they are distinct enough yeah. that even if you draw worse than me, which if you do, I'm very sorry. <laughs> uh, I can still probably distinguish what that is. And then I need four who's, who, what's? Four who? Four heel bones and two bones. I like it. Boy, so Egyptian system is really interesting. It's it's nothing like ours, really, right? Different symbols to represent the numerals. There's no reason in the world that the that we could use a little stick man to mean something. We could that could have meant eight or something. It totally could have. Uh, question. Yes. Yeah. For Egyptian, for example. If you were cruel enough to write them in like, like the the part one, so you, if you'd done like the heels first and then like a lotus flower. Oh, I like, see. So the values are not really like. I, I know, if I order. really felt like it, I could. Because okay. sometimes would, they did that because sometimes it just flowed better with what else was on the tablet. Mm -hmm. It kind of you could tell a story with it. You could, you know. So it, it there's no restriction for it to necessarily. Now I think normally they kind of did it in order. Yeah. But sometimes the order would kind of continue, or they would do stuff like, um, and then you could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then next to that you could have a 
something, right? So they have little little sections of things. It's still sort of in order, of course. Yeah. Uh, would I necessarily do that? I don't know. Um, we'll see how I'm feeling that day. I make it. Yeah. You feel like uh, getting getting us? I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't necessarily ever want to get you just to get you. Um, all right. So moving on to Romans. What's the very first thing that you need to notice in number 10? The fact that there's no, uh, well, there is one thing happening. What, what, what's the one thing that's happening in number 10? What's the very first thing you look for to translate from Roman numerals to Hindu Arabic? Well, addition is kind of like there. What's the one thing that's not always there that you need to look for? Pairs. Pairs that require you to subtract. Right, because addition's the the general rule. Romans use an additive system, but if you have a pair where the number, the numeral in front is smaller than the next one, that's subtraction. It's the very first thing you do when I give you a problem. I give you this long ass set of Roman numerals. You find pairs that are like that, and you you underline it. First, right. So I got to worry about this first. Or I got to worry about that somewhere. So what's the C? One hundred. And what's XL? Yeah, it'll be 50 minus 10. I like it. And of course, plus 2. So you get 142. I like it. Which is 100 more than the answer to life universe matter. Everybody knows 42. Yeah. What's going on in number 12 that I'm going to worry about? So is, it, is there any subtraction happening in number 12? The only one thing that doesn't really barely count, right? Yeah, and that one we kind of know what that is. Uh, and of course, what's up here? Um, like, so what do we got? We got, got 5,000. So what's this? 500. Yeah, 500 plus, so let me go to 5,000 plus 500 plus yeah, sure. 200. Plus. 50. 50. Plus 9. I like it. So it'll be 5,000. What'd you guys get? 759. Yes. I like it. And then, of course, you have to be able to go the other way. Now, this is where. Now, this one is. Pretty simple. This one is really easy. If you go this way, it's really easy to uh, make some mistakes. But this first one's not too bad. You got to be careful about how to make forty. So five hundred is pretty straightforward, right? What's five hundred? D. Yeah, D. And how do you do forty? Yeah, good. So it'll be fifty minus ten. So it'll be XL. Cool. So this will be 500 plus 50 minus 10 plus 7. And of course, 7 is just DII. Kick ass. And then, of course, 16 is a little easier because we just had a 5,000. So uh, how would you make 6,000? How would you make 6,000? Good, the odd. With a little bar on it, right? So there's 6,000. How do I make 400? I think we did that earlier, didn't we? Good, so this, this is like six times 1,000 plus <clears throat> 500 minus 100 to make 400. Right, so that'll be good, CD. And then I have to do 90, which we did earlier. That'll be 100 minus 10, right? Good. 10 to take away from 100. And then I just got to do 1J. Okay. Yeah. Not too evil. Has anybody ever done like this much with Roman numerals before? Some of you guys have? 
Most of you guys have it? Okay. No, but just go to Mexico, they make you. Oh. They teach you Roman numerals. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. Apparently not here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't learn Roman numerals. We don't really learn other languages as much either, which is kind of silly, but oh well. Um, what, what's the hardest part about getting a Roman numeral put together? What would you say? What's the hardest thing so far to get about how Roman numerals work? The pairs. The pairs, okay. So that's key. That's why I say when you're uh, translating from Roman to us, you look for pairs where it's smaller in front of bigger. It's the very first thing you look for, just so you don't make a mistake. Going from Hindu Arabic to Roman is really difficult. But you could do something like what I was doing here. That's from earlier, Jeff. Like I was trying to do here, right? Or like I was trying to do here. So you got the number 6,049. Once again, 6,000, six times 1,000. 400 would be 500 minus 100, right? So it is, you're sort of like creating those subtraction pairs as you go. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy because it's like any translation we do, if it's to a language we don't use a lot, it's going to be difficult. But it's not crazy hard, right? It's, it's still, it's more complicated than Egyptian, but that means they can use less symbols to represent larger numbers. So there's sort of an improvement in a few ways over the Egyptian numbers. Okay, now, uh, let's see, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Put this guy away. Now I want to talk about Have you ever seen the movie Life of Brian? Yeah. You know the, the Roman lesson scene? Well, I haven't seen it in forever. Where he gets caught like vandalizing graffiti. And it's like the, the John Cleese is like the, the guard. And it's like, you know, like a, like a lesson. It's pretty funny. I'll, I'll let you know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I gotta watch that over. Yeah. I was in theater in high school, so we watched uh, Money Python. Uh, we watched The Holy Grail a lot, for sure. It sort of like was a prerequisite to be able to quote the whole movie. Um, okay. I'm trying to remember where I was going to go. So the next thing we're going to look at is the Babylonian system. I might affectionately call this the baby system, just quickly, right? No disrespect at all to any Babylonians out there, um, but uh, it's just a quick way to reference. Um, Babylonians, this is really interesting. So they had uh, these tablets that they would pound messages on, and the end of the device they used, the chisel thing, had a certain shape to it, kind of looked like that, kind of looked like a triangle. Now, when I represent Babylonian numerals, I'm not gonna, I'll show you what I, what I do. So this symbol actually represents one. And in practice, I just draw a one. And this is really interesting. Uh, they only have two symbols. Three, and I'll show you the third one, but it's not really a numeral. Okay. They only have two symbols. They have a symbol for one, and they have a symbol for ten. And the symbol for ten is basically two of these in a Pac-Man kind of way. So normally I write this as a... Uh, Less than symbol, right? Just to make it easier to see what the hell it is. But they would do bam, bam, and make a little Pac-Man do, right, for 10. Now, if you think about it, just that's all I've told you for so far. There's a lot more to it. But just think what that might mean. They're, they're, thankfully, they're not an additive system, because otherwise, how would you write 80 million? You might think you have to write so many of these, right? So you go insane. Yes. Or are you just stretching? Yes. What was the symbol for 10? It, it's like, uh, let me draw it. So it's like you pound once this way, and then you pound it again this way. So it's like two triangles overlapping. Oh. But just to make it easier to tell for you, I'm not going to try to draw that every time. Okay. I'm just going to make it a less than symbol. Right. I think the book, I can remember they, yeah, they sort of make it better. Okay. Um, so this is the same thing. 
These two are sin. Babylonians are the civil are one of the civilizations that had a place value system. So very quickly. Um, no crap. No okay. Earth below. Okay. Four, three, two, one. What in this number, four thousand three hundred twenty one, what does this place mean for us? One. Right. I'm gonna put a one here for a second, but I'm gonna put something else. What does this place mean? Holy, Holy shit. And so every time I take another step up, I'm of course multiplying by 10, correct? So of course this place means hundreds, which is 10 squared. 10 is 10 to the first. One is 10 to the zero, right? Mm -hmm. So that represents a multiple of 10 every time. And what's really cool, just to throw this in, I know we're not officially doing decimals yet, but I apparently don't care. If every step down is division by 10, this divided by 10 is, 10 is 100. 100 divided by 10 is 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1. What's this place got to be? Right? To get here, I divide by 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1. So what's this place got to be? 1 divided by 10. So 1 10. Mm -hmm. So it just continues the pattern that's set up. There's nothing weird about it. Yes, there is, but oh well. There is stuff weird about it, but not as weird as you think. Okay. But before I forget, Egyptians actually had hallways to do fractions, and, and they, they actually, there's a lot more to each of these than we're going to touch on in this class. I teach Math 120, and we get deeper into it when I teach about Math 120. I actually make my students create their own number system, and I've had really cool shit come in, like entirely different way. Anyway, so I'm not going to make you do that. Don't worry. Um, now. What the Babylonians did is they used, they didn't use base 10. They used base 60. Interesting. So real quick, our base, how would I put this number together? Well, I have four thousands, right, plus three hundreds, plus blah, blah, blah. Okay, we know our own system, but every single place value system will work the same way. So for example, base 60, what does it look like? Well, what's the very first place got to be in base 60? Any base, actually, the very first place is the ones place, because you got to be able to represent one, two, three very quickly, right? So the very first place is ones. What's the next place in base 60? What's this place represent? Would it be 6 or 10? Base 10. Our system is base 10. Uh -huh. Jeff. Jeff. Base 10. First place is 1. Why is the next place 10? Because it's base 10, so every step I take is a factor of 10. Yes? Okay. This is base 60. So what, what's this place mean? 60. What would this place mean then? Ocean. Careful. No, it's not. No, no, no. Be Isn't this place 100, which is 10 times 10? Every step you take is times. It would be 3,600? 3,600. 3, 11. Damn. All right. All right. And of course, the next place I could just multiply that to 60 and however far I have to go. So before I bring the symbols in, let's just mess with base 60 for a second. If I was in base 60, and the way I would represent base 60 would be something like this, uh, like a little 60, a little subscript 60. That means it's 1, 2, 5, base 60. How would I construct what that number means to us? In this number, how much? I have five what's. I have five what's. What, what place is this in? The ones. The ones. What place is this in? No, 60. it's base 60, this is 60. What place, what place is that in? 3600. So I have 1, 3600 plus 260 plus 5 ones. And then you can put it together, correct? That's why base 10, there's nothing special about base 10. There's Biologically, the thumbs are the most important thing. Did we have to have four other fingers? No, we could have had eight fingers totally, right? We get an odd number of fingers, five on one hand, four on the other one. 
right? And if you had five on both, you'd be the weird one. You're like, what the hell happened to you? Okay. This pig's got pounds of pain. <laughs> what's, what's up with this guy? So what would this be? Be 3,600 plus 120 plus five, so it'd be 3725. Okay, I like it. Now here's the next level of weirdness. Base 10, what's the biggest number I can put in any single place? Nine. So base 10, the biggest number, because of course, if I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, what's the next number after that? 10. It rolls over, just like a speedometer. So now I have zero ones, one ten. Yes? Yeah. All right, I like it. So what are the base is? So in base 10, is there a digit for 10? No. There's a digit for the next number below. So in base 60, what is the biggest single thing I could put in any place? 59. Stay with me, stay with me. So let me show you an example. Let me show you an example. Okay. I love you. So you got, this is one, base, this is how I'm going to draw one, and this is how I'm going to draw ten. Okay? okay? Although we know officially it's little triangles. Okay. So let's investigate this. Let's see. What if I had, what if somebody put, and, and the really unfortunate thing is, again, they don't have any symbol for zero. So they don't really have a placeholder, but we'll work with that. So let's say I had a one, and then I add this. So two places, right? Can somebody tell what that number is? What is that? So what place is it in first? It's in the ones place, yes? It's the first place. So notice the Babylonians can put a bunch of shit in one place, yes? Yeah. For us, we can only put a single digit. For them, they could put a whole bunch of things. Okay, so that's some of you guys are like, how am I going to throw 15? What the hell? This is what they did. So this is the ones place. This, of course, is in the 60s place. So I have how many 60s? One. one. And how many ones? 21. 21. So this would be 81. Whoa. I like That's that. Trippy. It is trippy. And again, you guys, when you were born, you were born on the shoulders of a lot of stuff that happened, right? There were a lot of decisions that were made. There were a lot of things that just were like thrown out. The idea of zero was invented. The symbol for zero was created. A lot of shit. So you guys grew up and you're like, people didn't know zero? What the hell? Of course, you guys grew up and like, people didn't have smartphones when you were seven? What the hell? Anyway, right? Oh, it's just, that's not so old. Um, now, the only real way to tell when the next one starts is if there's a little space in the middle, which kind of sucks. So what if I had this here? Um, okay. So would that be 10 times 60? Say again? Would that be 10 times 60? Well, how many places are there? Can you guys tell? How many places are there? Two. two places, definitely, right? I made a nice space in the middle. Yeah. So there's two places. What place is this? The ones. ones. What place is this? 60. So there's 11 in the ones place. I love it. And 60s. So how many 60s do I have? Three. Good. Somebody's always making a mistake saying a three, but we know this symbol means tens. Yeah. So I have 30 60s plus, like you said, 11. 11 ones. So 1811? Yes, I love it. Sounds like a history quiz. <laughs> I don't know what happened With there. the Babylonian, yeah. <laughs> Very trippy. Different, correct? Yeah. Very different. Really quick. What idea do you think we kind of stole from the Babylonian space? 60 times another. How many? Well, let me just give it away. How many seconds in a minute? How many minutes in an hour? How many seconds in an hour? 3600. 60 times 60. 3600. So one reason they did that is how long is a year roughly? 360. Yeah. And 60 goes into that. So a lot of civilizations, of course, they're very based on harvest, agriculture. 
so they would have based uh, their number system, you'll see it in the Mayans too, on the length of the year. Okay, okay. Um, I did say, oh, oh, let's do this. This kind of sucks. We're running out of time. If I wanted to go the other way, so let's say I had, uh, I wanted to put the number, you can do it, buddy. Here it comes. There it is. 8,591. That's in Hindu Arabic, and I want to take that to Babylonian. How the shit? How the shit would I do that? What the? What? What? So I want you to realize the ones place is sort of a leftovers place. Mm -hmm. Always. So whenever I'm translating from Hindu Arabic to some other system, I'm kind of starting at the high end. Yeah. So, so how many places am I going to need? Well, I need the ones place, 60s place, 3,600. What's the next place out of curiosity? Uh, is it 16,000? Right, multiply by 60 again. Is that too much? Do I need do I need to go up this far? You can see I don't need to, right? Because the number is 8,000 something. I don't need a 216,000 place, do I? It's more than the number. Okay. So I, here's one thing I'll tell you right now. Always, when you're going from Hindu Arabic to somebody else, always go at least one place too far to make sure you went far enough. I don't know if that makes sense right now, but if we do a few more of these, you can make very silly mistakes if you don't go far enough out. So I know I've gone far enough out. I really want this to make sense. Um, when I translated this back, the very first thing we did was 30 times 60, correct? And then I threw the 11 in there, right? Here, how many 3600s can I use to create part of this? Another way to say that is, how many times does 3600 go into 8591? So how many 3600s fit in the 8590 with some left over, right? Two. Two. Yes? And what is that so far? What is twice, Jeff? What is twice 3600? 7200. 7200, I like it. So what do I have left that the rest of this has to make up for? 1,391. I like it. And then you just keep going. It's kind of nice. You just keep going. The algorithm is sort of set up. Did I turn him back on? It's made on. Oh, sweet. Thank God. Probably point you in the right direction. Um, now, how many 60s? Oh, by the way, real quick, real quick. Do you guys have your calculators? I want to show you something really cool. You know, like, I don't trust you, man. You're cool with math and the calculator. Right, let me do it with you so I know what I'm saying. I'll do it up here on the overhead. No, I won't. I don't want to turn the back one. You don't have time. There's no time. So do this for me. So take 8591 divided by 3600, and don't do anything else. Just, just get that answer. 8591 divided by 3600. Right? Mm -hmm. What do you guys get? Two point this. No. So, uh, I don't know if you guys are going to get this. Subtract two from that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Now multiply that by 3,600. Does that number look familiar? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Does that number look familiar? You guys do what I just said. So, did everybody get that? You should get 1391. Yeah. Of course you do. Of course you do. What is the point, whatever the hell it was? 8591 divided by 6. Yeah, what is the point 386 blah 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 isn't that the remainder mm -hmm. so if you were to do this uh long division which i'm not going to do you would blah, blah 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 and you have remainder if you want to write it old style 1391 but what's the right way to write it 1391 divided by 3600 correct mm -hmm. isn't that the point three blah 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 so of course when i multiply it by 3600 i get the actual amount that would have been left over that kicks so much ass. 
or not, or you can just do it like I did here. That's fine. All right, either way. Just want to throw you another way to do it. Now, what do I do? I still have this much to take care of. So 60 goes into this how many times? 23. 23 times 60. You can do the trick we just did, or you can do 13. Was that 13, 80? So then I have 11 left to take care of. Does anybody, have I lost anybody completely? you got to let me know when that happens. Yes, what's up? I lost. All right. Were you okay with, where did I lose you? You have to always tell me the minute I lose you. So you're cool with the bases, right? Okay. And you know why I did, kind of get why I did this? Just to make sure I've gone, so I know that this is, I need to start here. And two of these create part of this number, right? And then I have this left over that the other guys have to take care of. Well, how much of this can 60 take care of? Well, 60 goes into this 23 times. It can take care of 1380, because that's what 23 times 60 is. And then I can see what's left over with the last two. So what I really want you to get, doing it this way, isn't it multiplication addition? Yeah. Putting it back together. And the opposite way is division subtraction. Kind of makes sense. So two of these plus 23 of these plus 11 makes that number. So it kind of makes sense to figure out how many times this plus how many times this I've got to divide and subtract yeah. to kind of work backwards what needs to multiply and add. Right? So two of these, does that take care of this whole number? No. I've got this much left. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so listen. I really want everybody to get this. So if I just had two here, and these had nothing, that would be 7,200 by itself, right? Does that make sense? So two of these, that would be 7,200. So I need these guys to help me make this all the way. They need to help me get to this. If, so if I do 2360s, that gets me, that takes care of 1380 of what's left. All right, so two of these make 7200. 23 of these make 1380. But I haven't made 8591 yet. I need whatever left over in the last place. Okay, sorry, I don't want to focus too much on you because I know other people have the same question. I know it. Let me see. Yeah, we'll do it. I'll do one more example with a smaller number, and then we might have to call it a day. Um, so here we figured out it was 11. Let me finish this up and do another example with a smaller number. You'll notice what I'm doing for myself is. I'm not throwing too much at myself at the same time. So I get the work done, and now I'm going to bring the numerals in. Right? So how do I actually represent this? Two. Two bars. Yeah, good. And then 23. Two Pac-Mans and good. two bars. Three. And then 11. One Pac-Man and one bar. Yeah. Nothing wrong with doing it in steps like that. You don't have to throw too much in there at once. Uh, I don't want to throw you off track, but what is the little... We're getting there. Oh, okay. Yep. That's that last symbol. I said there's three symbols, and I've only shown you two. Cool. All right. I'll do it on this one. Okay. Um, so what if I, what if I wanted to do... Uh, let me do two real quick examples, then we'll call it in. What if I wanted to do 57? If I just want to change 57 from Hindu Arabic to Babylon. Why is that one a pretty straightforward one? How many places do I need? I need the ones place. Yeah. The next place is 60s. Do I need it? No. Because this has no 60s. It's less than 60, so I don't need that place. So it really is just one place. And how do I make 57? Five Pac-Man. Mm -hmm. Seven bars. And then seven bars. I lost track. One, two, three. There you go. <laughs> 
Now, what's really nice on top of that, are, are, is that cool by itself? Right, so, so we need to understand the nice thing with these symbols, it's just like the Egyptians on the first level, right? Just like the Egyptians. Five of these means five tenths, because each of these is a tenth. And then seven of these means seven ones. So this makes 57. So that string of symbols is 57. Just like an Egyptian, what would 57 be? Wouldn't it be five of these? Mm -hmm. And then seven ones? Yeah. All right, almost the same, right? The minute you get a number above 60, you've got to use two places. Just like we get a number above you know, nine to 10, I need to start using two places to represent those numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, oh. There's an alternate way to do this. 57 is 60 minus three. So that's the last symbol that I hadn't shown you yet. They do a little triangle with a triangle above, and that is the minus symbol. Right? So Babylonians are really curious. They did some Roman kind of stuff. They did some Hindu Arabic kind of place value stuff. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, all right. This is why. All right. This is why I was trying to figure out the right time to bring out certain manipulatives. And it seems like the next class will be the right time. If this means 60, and this means 1, and I want to make the number 121, right? Mm -hmm. How many boxes would I need, and how many dots would I need to make? Now, you could say you need 121 dots. Is that the smartest way to do it? Mm -hmm. But that's a valid answer, correct? Yeah. 121 dots means 121. What's a better way, of course, to do it? Well, if each box is 60, how many boxes could I use? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, so that's 120 by itself. And then you need, of course, a dot. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's really, that's why you start with the bigger places to figure out what they can take care of, and then what's left over trickles down to the rest. So, last example. Um, Let's do 117. 117. How many places do I need for Babylonian? Three. Yeah, 160, because the next one is way bigger than the number itself. I like it. I like it. Now, 117 is interesting because it's three away from a nice number, but too bad. How many 60s? One. Say again? One. one. There it is. I think it said four first. Like, oh, shit. So 117, so 160, because two 60s don't fit in here, correct? That's all it is. 160 fits in there, and then I'm going to see what's left over. So this is sort of like the remainder spot. So what I, if I do 160, how much of this number is left? 57. 57. And now that fits into this, right? So you can do it either way you want to. So you can either do this as 1, and then 50... Seven, or you can do one and then 60 minus three. Either way. Okay. Um, yes. For example, say you had a number. Uh, you had 100, 120. How ah, this is perfect. Yeah. So that's exactly why them not having a, a symbol for zero. They did, towards the end of their civilization, they created a symbol for zero, but for most of the time, they didn't. Mm -hmm. So it had to be understood. It had to be in the context of whatever it was. Um, you know, like if I needed 120 bananas, mm -hmm. I would order 121, just to make sure, <laughs> right? But I, I'm almost certain that might have happened in some cases, but yeah. eventually they did go, we really need something. Um, but yeah, it was really just keeping a place there, which could be misinterpreted. How big of a place? What if you have like some big ass number with a small, and there's, everything here would be empty, right? Yeah, exactly. 
how big of a space, and do, do they know exactly how many spaces I mean? Yes, exactly. Okay, guys, I'll stop torturing you. That's enough. Um, so again, Thursday's off. I'll see you on Tuesday. Uh, so enjoy the time off.